All right, here goes nothing. Uh, this is going to take a little while, and we're going to go over a lot of stuff, but uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, and I'll say right up front, uh, the bald geek, uh, the, uh, as a name on, on, on Twitter, actually got me um, interested in uh, in a lot of this stuff, really. And uh, and so GR Iridium, uh, the Iridium Toolkit, you know, goes through some pretty regular updates. Uh, I didn't realize that um, ACARS... Uh, and I have this page pulled up here uh, just to kind of educate myself a little more on it. But uh, I actually can run or does run over uh, Iridium in some cases. So I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. Um, so that got me to look at Dragon OS again because uh, Dragon OS Focal, at least, I had uh, GR Iridium, the Iridium Toolkit. It was all kind of older builds uh, because I wanted to maintain compatibility, and I'll show here in a second with Iridium Live. Um, but uh, just here within the last couple days, everything um, has kind of moved so fast, or really maybe just even today. Uh, Iridium Live, uh, the developer... Um, updated some things uh, you could see 40 minutes ago um, updated some things to where the iridium live works with the uh, latest gr iridium and the iridium toolkit um, and in dragon os focal uh, gnu radio is uh, the 3.8 version so just keep that in mind the uh, gr iridium is a 3.8 branch uh, so so everything i show here the goal is the same would be uh, set up on the uh, Dragon OS Pi 64, which is nearly there, uh, but I, I need to update a couple things. That way they're both on the same page. Uh, let me think, what else? Uh, and, and so I'm going to step through pretty much everything. We'll show how to use uh, GR Iridium. This video is meant to kind of replace all the other uh, videos, especially the old ones, because now this is um, the way that GR Iridium uh, works and, and whatnot, so there's no confusion. All right, so uh, GR Iridium, we'll take a look at um, at this first. And uh, I also, since I got it working, I want to show, um, I have an RSP1 Alpha. We can take a look at the RTL SDR and a HackRF. They all have bias T inside, which can be turned on, which can power the antenna that's like hanging out my window over here, a small little RTL SDR, the older patch panel. It's just hanging out there, so you might hear some background noise. Windows open. Uh, let's see. So we want to take a look at first uh, using the Iridium uh, extractor, and we're gonna we're gonna have lots of windows open here. But let's see. was testing earlier so we're going to we're just going to pull down some information at first and we're going to try and decode the uh, audio as a real quick example just to show you that that works and so we need to go user source gr iridium examples and once I finish all this and there's a new ISO out there, it will have everything on there. I, I haven't finished the ISO yet, so everything I'm showing is on the ISO or you know on the latest build of Dragon OS that I'm working on right now. And I made an RSP1 alpha.com file and we're going to send that uh, we'll just send it to the home directory here to output.bits. So oh, and the other thing too is, this is what that RSP1 Alpha configure, configuration file looks like. I modified um, uh, one of the um, RTL SDR SOPI comp files that was in the newest GNU radio. I modified it and you know, I needed, for me at least, I needed these device args because I'm gonna, I need the bias T to be on. Antenna RX. I'm, I, this uh, laptop is like an i7, 32 gigs of RAM. It's pretty powerful. I have the sample rate at uh, 8 and the center frequency uh, this is, has to do with gain. I found that 20 and 0 works for me. Maybe uh, the IFGR could be further adjusted and then the bandwidth at 8. At eight. Something to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out the uh, available band or the sample rates and whatnot. Well, let me see. Driver equals SDR play. 
The SDR play is, I guess, kind of interesting here. You can see the sample rates, the different sample rates that you can pick from, and the bandwidths. If you don't set something that's compatible here, it ends up reverting to like 2 megahertz. So just keep that in mind. That's how I have this set up right now with uh, 8 and 8. So I'm going to see uh, what we got here. I think the OK tabs, uh, the ball geek can let me know you want like 60 to 70 or better. So we're getting information now. I'm going to let that run for a little bit uh, in the hopes that uh, I can get some data into that output.bits. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Iridium Toolkit, the latest. And we are going to do the voice decoding. So the AMBE decoder is in Dragon OS, and we're going to try and run the Iridium parser on that to turn the output bits into output parsed, and then we'll run the stats voke on that. Oh, I might cut out a little bit of the video here afterwards because I want to sit for a while and let it uh, get enough uh, data in there so at least there's some audio. Uh, but I'll give it one last try here, and then I, I just kind of want to move on. At least you know how to run it, and, um, and I can almost promise you, as long as you follow this, it will work, as long as you got some uh, good you know, data that you've received. So we'll stop this, and uh, what we need to do is we need to take the Iridium parser, We'll use Python 3 because DragonOS has Python 2 and Python 3 with Python 2 being the default. And sometimes, unless the, you know, the top of the Python file is specifies Python 3, you need to put Python 3 in. Otherwise, you'll, find, you'll get some errors and whatnot. And you'll, you'll realize, hey, I need to use Python 3. So anyways, Python 3 will do the Iridium parser. We'll take the output bits to output parsed. Hopefully at least there's some red dots there. I'll show you what I mean. We also need to export path for the user source Iridium toolkit. Just like you see here, it mentions it on the readme page and uh, that sets it up so the decoder that I've put in there will work. And then we need to run the Python 3 again on the Statsvoke PY and the Iridium toolkit on the output parsed. Wow, that's uh, I'm I'm literally blown away. This is the most uh, I've seen on here, and literally the shortest amount of time I I ran it. So, what I'm looking for is audio, and um, don't be surprised I'm not gonna play a whole bunch. Uh, I'll find something here and uh, see if I can include it in the video. But what you need to do is left click, then right click in various areas on the red, and you'll eventually find something. Okay, so you kind of heard something there. I'll see if I can get something a little more. Okay, anyways, you get the idea. Run it for a much longer time, and um, it, it works surprisingly well. Let's leave it at that. So uh, clear this out. We're going to move on. We're going to do the ACARS, which we needed the newer Iridium toolkit to be able to do this. And uh, the Ball Geek has uh, some excellent directions. I was hoping to make a little shorter by updating things on here. So let me see. We need a couple windows open for this. And I kind of already have them ready uh, here in the background. So in one window, well, let's see. In one window, 
we're going to run the Iridium Extractor, multi-frame, I'm still Well, let's see. You kind of get the point here. Iridium Extractor will use the user source GeoIridium examples. I'm using the RSP1 Alpha comp file I'm working on. We'll pipe that you know, Python 3. And then we're going to output it to ZMQ. Okay, so let's hit enter. So we're running again, and this should be going to ZMQ. You can see any uh, drop that you're getting here at the bottom. Now we'll come over here, open another window, and we're going to do Python 3, and we're going to do the Iridium Toolkit, the Reassembler, the dash M, ACAR, ZMQ, and make sure you put the ending on there, just like I've got it. We'll hit enter. You can see new subscriber. And hopefully we'll get a message across here pretty soon. While that is running, and I'm waiting for messages, we're going to do something else too. Okay. We are going to go in the user source, let me think, Iridium Toolkit. We'll do go into HTML. Now you can use uh, sudo. You can come down, and I have changed it to Python 3, and I'm just binding it to 127.001, but you could change that to your IP address or 000. Oh, look, we got a message right there. You could change that to 000. Uh, just note when you run it, unless you change the verbiage up here, it's going to look, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to reflect the IP address. So anyways, so let's take a look at this. We'll do, um, and because it's sitting here in the user source directory, and it wants to write the sats, I think it is, JSON, maybe we need to do a sudo example.sh. And we can hover over the little link here, but like I said, if you if you changed it to an IP address, it's not going to work. But the uh, cool thing is, is we just got ACARs here, and you can see the NOTAMs and the message, which, uh, let's see, wherever, oh, Atlanta, maybe? Atlanta arrival? Maybe. Okay. And let's see. We'll open this up. We can see we are looking at this version of Iridium Live that comes with the uh, toolkit. I think if you run it long enough, you'll see the satellite information. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about this map. I'm assuming this is maybe the coverage area here and uh, this um, computer that I'm connected to um, is uh, well I'm VNC into another place but uh, you can see we got the Iridium sat 19 beams visible to us some pretty cool information so there you go that's how to get all that up running I got more messages so this, uh, and I know I'm talking like super in depth on all of this because uh, the video would be extremely long and I need to do some more research, but at least you can see how you're going to be able to get this all running with Dragon OS. You can do it now, uh, obviously, uh, I'm just trying to make it uh, easier. So let's uh, stop everything here and we'll look, take a look at the last thing here, which is the other uh, Iridium Live. Got a page pulled up here. This uh, web visualizer for GR Iridium frames, and you can read more about what it's showing and about the um, ring alert band. 
get some information about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and we're going to modify this command a little. But we'll go in the user source Iridium Live. And, um, and the reason being is because we've got the, uh, no, sorry, we'll go into the Iridium Toolkit because I have this UDP for IL Python file that's related to uh, the Iridium Live. I've just stuck it here. You can change the IP if you need. I just have it on 000 right now. And we need to clean this up a little bit, so we'll do Python 3. And that's why I stuck it in the Iridium Toolkit because it's that file is right there. We come back and we'll change this to user source radium toolkit. We'll change this to the RSP one alpha. Well, and it's actually sitting in user source gr gr radium, and we'll take offline out of the here. And let's see, we'll run the extra, uh, radium extractor like this, and we should see that happening, which is the UDP packets. I know I've got a million windows open here. We'll go to the user source, Iridium Live, and this is the newest uh, binary I just built today uh, based on changes the Iridium uh, developer, or the Iridium Live developer did. And we'll do sudo Iridium Live. This will start up. I'll open up this. We'll change it to local host. Now we can see we've got this running. Check out satellites. Okay, we've got information there. Statistics. We can see we've already got some ring alerts broadcast. And we'll go live. Let it run for a while, and there we go. We have information again working. We click on it, it's pretty interesting. And then this will update. So, there you go. I think that's uh, like three things I covered with uh, GR Iridium and what you can do with it and uh, maybe I'll break it down and go a little more in depth but uh, and, and this is going to be all together in the next uh, Dragon OS release you can still follow uh, the the, um, the guy that, uh, that the ball geek has and, and get most of this up and going now it would just be some manual um, adding of packages and files and whatever else but uh, I'm going to try and get this all going here in the next release. All right. Thank you.